All right, a new video today, and today I want to talk about some things I always talk about, which is the gospel. I've been seeing a lot of YouTube uh, preachers and things like that, and I really don't watch a lot of YouTube preachers and stuff because they kind of a lot of them get it wrong. And they're not rightly dividing their Bible, which is a big uh, a big problem with a lot of people that say they're Bible believers and things. They're they're not getting their their uh, their their doctrine correctly because they're not rightly dividing. A lot of them listen to the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They want to preach what Jesus was preaching, but he was only preaching to the Jews. Jesus said, I come to save only the sheep, lost sheep of the house of Israel, the Jews. Once the Jews rejected as a nation, he says, okay, Paul, you're up. And then Jesus spoke through Paul for our doctrine today. From the books from Romans through Philemon, it's our doctrine today. And we go through Paul. So Paul says, follow me. You have to follow Paul to get to Jesus. And that's really the only way today. And people say, oh, I'll repent of your sins. And all this stuff, they're trying to do all this stuff back here in the early book of Acts and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and stuff like that. And people, you know, say, well, I just believe in Jesus or I love Jesus and things like that. Just, that doesn't get you to heaven. People, and then other people say, well, I, be, I believe Jesus is the Messiah. Well, yeah, Jesus is the Messiah, yes. But just in that alone, is it going to save you? We have to go to the Bible and what does God say? How we get saved. That's what it really comes down to. It's not what you think it did save you. Well, this sounds nice. I love the Lord and uh, he, he's going to accept me. That's not what the Bible says. And a great Bible verse to explain this is Ephesians 1.13. And Ephesians 1.13 1, says, In whom also you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So you trusted. Trust, faith, believe are three words that mean the same thing in the Bible. Let's read it again. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of of your salvation, saved, in whom also you were believed, you were then sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay, so if you were saved, you have the Holy Spirit. Great, that's what it tells you. That's awesome. You are not only do you have it, you're sealed with it. That's also called a spiritual circumcision, which the Bible teaches. And if you actually... when you, The moment you get saved, the moment you hear the gospel, understand the gospel, which... Ephesians, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, Ephesians 1.13 just said, once you hear the gospel, understand the gospel, believe, then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That is what you say. Because the Holy Spirit will not enter and seal itself to you if you still have sins in your soul. And the Bible teaches that sins in your soul is like it's infecting and diseasing your soul. It makes you sick spiritually by having sins. But the blood of Jesus washes all that sins away once you hear the gospel, understand the gospel, and believe. Then and only then will the Holy Spirit enter and seal itself to you because other than that, the Holy Spirit will have nothing to do with you because there's still sins in your soul. And see how that works. And people aren't mentioning the blood anymore. People don't mention that. And it says in the scriptures, so 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says in, in, the, in the end, let's read it. In the end, there's going to be a falling away from the truth. And then you have all these cults saying... Oh, we have, the, we have the truth now. Jehovah's Witness more than just a few hundred years old. Oh, we have the truth now when the Bible says you're going to fall away from the truth and have less of it or not the truth at all. And they're cults and things. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, well, in the context of this, the rapture, that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin revealed the son of perdition. I'll be a falling away. People will get away from the truth in those days. And those days are now. <clears throat> and people are getting away from the truth. They're telling people, just repent of your sins. And they're telling people, just, just believe Jesus, just love Jesus, believe he's the Messiah. And a lot of times they're taking the kingdom gospel and applying it to themselves. The kingdom gospel is what Jesus preached. Jesus was preaching only to Jews and to trust in who he was. Well, they, they, he, Jesus wanted the Jews to know and believed that he was the Messiah they were waiting for, the promised seed predicted thousands of years earlier. You could read clear back in <coughs> excuse me, the book of Genesis. <coughs> and what we see here, that's not for today. Is, was Jesus a Messiah? Of course he was. Jesus Christ is a Messiah. But today we trust in the blood atonement. Of course, the gospel, which people don't seem to know, is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. We'll get to that in just a minute. We have to see it's through the scriptures. You can't just make up your own way of salvation and that's good enough. There's not a chance. There's only one way to be saved today, and that's it. And the King James Bible is the only Bible that's telling you that. I did a video just not long ago showing how corrupt other Bible versions are. That, of course, the Bible's in English. And you leave out, they all leave out the word how. 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. It's how, and it says, and how the Christ died. And that's what we believe in, how he died. How did Jesus die? Well, he had to spill his blood. That's how he did it. Spilling his blood is how he died for your sins. He died and rose again the third day because death couldn't hold him. Jesus Christ is God, so death couldn't hold him anyway. It could hold him. He's perfection. And he's all power. So we see it's that. If you do not have a King James Bible, take the Bible you have and throw it in the trash. I'm not even exaggerating. Just throw it away. Be done with it. Get yourself a King James Bible, not a new King James, <laughs> a regular just King James Bible. You will not go wrong. And we see here some interesting things. Let's get to the, to the gospel. If you don't know what the gospel is, you will now know. And if people that watch my videos know, but I love to keep pushing the gospel so people remember it. <clears throat> Gospels, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4, through 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, we also you receive, and wherein you stand, by which you are also saved, if you keep in memory of what I preach unto you, unto you, unless you believe in vain. Vain, vanity. Unless you're trusting in something you did. Like what? A repentance, or a water baptism, or calling on Jesus, calling on the name of the Lord to be saved, uh, 10, Romans 10, 13. But if you keep reading Romans 10, you'll see you need to hear the gospel and understand and believe. You keep reading in, uh, in Romans 10. And it's, you know, and all these other things. And in verse 3, it says, For I delivered to you, first of all, which I also received, how, right here, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Only the King James Bible in English uh, translations has the word how. There might be others because there's like 150 or whatever. Uh, Bible translations in English. I don't even, I don't even know how many. I've got about 15 translations here. And I've got, for example, I got one of these. Very helpful. It's got all these different uh, Bible versions in one book. And if you look in here, it says, and it's, it doesn't say how, and anything other than King James says, and that, and that Christ died for your sins. What does that mean? And that he died for your sins? Okay, he died for my sins. All right. You can't get saved that way because the King James Bible says no. And the King James Bible is a true text. Now, let's read it again. It says, For I received, it says, uh, For I delivered unto you, first of all, which I also received. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 3. It says, How Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. How did he die for our sins? Spilling his blood. Now, I'm not just making stuff in the air. Let's look at some amazing verses here. Let's look at Romans. Let's look at Romans uh, 3.25. 3.25 says, In whom God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, it says. To declare us righteous for the sins that are, uh, through the remissions, righteous for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So we have to have faith in that blood that was spilled, the blood of Christ. This is what Romans 5. Well, 5, 1 says you have to have faith. It says, 5, 1, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Justified, just if you didn't do it. Justified. Saved. It says, okay, you're justified by faith. Faith in what? Well, Romans 5, 9. Much more than now being justified, we, uh, by his blood, we should be saved from wrath through him. Wrath of hell. So you're, ju you're justified by faith in the blood, right? Well, let's look at verse 11 in Romans 5. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, the forgiveness. Well, how do you get atonement? Well, faith in the blood atonement, the blood sacrifice here. In order to be saved today, now tribulation begins, you can't get saved this way. You have to do works and keep the commandments and everything. I don't want to live in tribulation, because Jesus and uh, Daniel both said, tribulation will be the worst time the world will have ever seen, ever. I don't want to live in that world. And I don't have to. I'm blood washed and rapture ready. Now let's go over here. Let's have a, have a look over here. Let's show the importance of the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. If you look at Romans chapter 2, verse 16, it says something pretty powerful about the gospel. It says, In the days when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, Paul says. What's his gospel? Well, the, the gospel he declared. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 4. Because if you read 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 1, it says, More of a brother, more of the brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, what Paul says. And he who's Paul? He's our apostle. We follow Paul to get to Jesus. Romans eleven thirteen says this. Romans eleven thirteen says, For I speak unto you, Gentiles, as much as I um, am the apostle to the Gentiles, have magnified my office. What office? The office of apostleship. So Paul 
is your apostle. We follow Paul today for doctrine. We don't, that's what Jesus said to do, follow Paul. And that's how you rightly divide your Bible. Because we have to rightly divide 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a work and be not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We have to rightly divide it. In order to rightly divide the Bible to get the gospel, you have to understand how, which is the blood. That's rightly dividing. You have to understand it's, it's through, it, we're in this time. We're not over here. We're not in the time when Jesus was walking the earth. We're not in that time. We're not under Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to where there's a kingdom gospel. That kingdom gospel is coming back in tribulation for Jews. And that kingdom gospel is always only for Jews. And Paul says, I'm the apostle of the Gentiles. So the Gentiles, us today, and all God, you know, if, if God bless it, if you're Jew, it doesn't matter. A Jew today, before the rapture, you still have to come through this too to be saved. If you're a Jewish, you say, I trust Jesus, and I want to get saved, and amen. You still have to trust in the blood. You still have to trust and go through 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 for the gospel today. Everybody has to go through the gospel today in this time. Of course, in tribulation, it won't be that way. It'll be different. And there's different times in which people got saved in different times and throughout the Bible. And it will be different times also in the future time, too, in tribulation to get saved. But you can only get saved through faith in the blood atonement today and that he died and rose in the third day. That's what the gospel is. You don't know what the gospel is and people say the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. The gospel is what to know in order to get saved. So if you don't know the gospel, you're probably not saved because if you don't even know what the gospel is, then it's like, okay... What do I do with this? Well, you have to find the gospel because the gospel is showing you how to get the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.13. And as we see some of the King James Bible, and only the King James Bible says it's that how Christ died. We have faith in how Christ died. So there's no works today, Ephesians 2.8 and 9. We see there's no works for salvation. The only thing we are doing is having faith in something that Jesus did. He did the work. We don't trust in anything we do. We have nothing to do with helping our salvation. We have nothing to do with salvation. We just trust in Jesus. That is, that's what he, that was his job, the salvation. He's the one that can do that because he is God was manifest in the flesh. And his blood of God fell upon the cross. There was no sin. It was sinless and innocent and perfect. Jesus Christ is at all times, past, present, and future, sinless perfection. So we see that it's only Jesus is the one that can take the sins away. And we, we can't assist with that. He did it. We just trust in that he did it. It's what he did. Anything you do actually makes the gospel not work. It sounds like that in a, it says that if, if you believe in vain, means something that you did. You believe all this stuff, but you still believe you have to do something, then you're going to hell. You solely only trust in what Jesus Christ did. You have to surrender. You have to be have that mindset like, Lord, I can't do anything. It's all you. It's all what you did, Christ Jesus. Your blood fell upon a cross. I trust in you. For what you did. What is that he did? Spilled his blood. Look at look at Hebrews 9.22. Hebrews 9.22 shows the importance of the blood. Because if you don't... If there hasn't been a blood sacrifice made for your sins, you're going to hell. Now I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Hebrews 9.22 says, Almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Without the shedding of blood is no remission. Without the shedding of blood for your sins is no forgiveness. So if you have not made a blood sacrifice, you're going straight to hell. And that's all there is to it. And how do you make a blood sacrifice today? Well, not the same way they did back then. God commanded them, you, you sin, you take the blood of the animal, and you go and you slit its throat, and you make a blood sacrifice. And that animal is going to die in your place for your sin. Jesus died in your place for all the sins of all the world. See, the animal sacrificed to stop the sin so that they could go down to Abraham's bosom instead of going to hell. However, the blood of Jesus purges the sin, removes it completely, gone. The blood of Jesus takes the sin away to where it's not even there anymore. God doesn't even see that sin anymore. He's like, no, I've forgiven it. I don't see it no more. Thank God for being a loving and merciful and patient God for us. So we have to see it's all only what Jesus did. There's no works. Any works would make this void, it sounds like, through the gospel. So we have to be careful. Is there anything we can do? Just believe. Just believe he did and did it for you. Just believe and know, like, you know, I'm saved because Jesus spilled his blood for me, making a blood sacrifice for my sins. And that is how the blood sacrifice is made for your sins, by the faith in the blood Jesus spilled. 
and we have faith that Jesus died and rose again the third day. Let's look at um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. If we look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we can also uh, see that about that he died and rose again the third day. Uh, let's see here. 1 Thessalonians 4.14, 4, it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Well, see, we all, that's a part of the gospel because we trust in, the, in how Christ died, which is the blood atonement. And we trust that Jesus died and rose again the third day. He rise on the third day. Is Jesus still in the ground? No. Jesus is up on the, in the third heaven on his throne now. He was only in hell for three days. That was almost two thousand. Well, <laughs> that was over two thousand. Well, almost two thousand years ago, because it'll be around twenty thirty three. Where it'll be exactly two thousand years. So we see that Jesus isn't in the ground dead like we all. Like we die, we our body's going into the ground. And if you're saved, your your soul goes to heaven because Paul says, "As it was the body present with the Lord." So we see how all this fits in, and it it actually fits in quite perfectly how this all works because you know we'll, Jesus rose again. And he took the captives captive. Like the Old Testament saints were in Abraham's bosom, like Daniel and David and Jacob and Noah and all those. They were in Abraham's bosom waiting for this promised seed to come. And that promised seed, which I believe happened, is he went down and talked to those Old Testament saints. He says, hey, I'm that promised seed you guys have been waiting for all this time in Scripture. I died, in your, I died on the cross for your sins. I spilled my blood and took all your sins away. Let's get out of here. And I believe on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. I believe he took all the Old Testament saints with him. And I do believe there's a very good possibility that the Old Testament saints went in their bodies. And they took their bodies to heaven too. Because what happens at the rapture? At the rapture, your body and soul, gone. It sounds like your blood would probably be left behind and your clothing would probably be left behind. But it says blood can't inherit the kingdom of heaven. So there'll probably be, like, somebody's finding someone raptured, they're going to find a big pool of blood in your clothes. Your body won't be here. Your body will be... Uh, uh, made immortal, perfect, and your body will become glorified. So that's how that goes. I'm just waiting any time. I'm, I'm always praying, look, bring the rapture. I can't wait. I don't want to be here. I'm not comfortable here. This isn't my home. And every day goes by, you know, and, and the more we grow as Christians, the more it's like you feel don't feel comfortable here. Like, man, I just got to get out of here, man. I can't wait to see Jesus, you know. That's what it comes down to because people want to lie to you and they want to say there's no pre-tribulation rapture. That's a lie from the pits of hell. I'm serious. I've done so many videos on showing where the Bible teaches without a doubt, definitively, there is, in fact, a pre-tribulation rapture. And i got other videos about that we can get into. And definitely check these videos out. I mean, these videos go back seven, eight years on this channel and stuff. So we have to see how that goes. But there's only one way to be saved today. There's always only one way to be saved in any dispensation. But this dispensation is the church age. We follow Paul for scripture, and we follow Paul because Jesus spoke through Paul, and that's the way Jesus set it up. But it's only through the blood. We have faith in that blood. That's how you make a blood sacrifice. You have to make a blood sacrifice for the forgiveness of your sins. You don't make a sacrifice of an animal. Not only is that illegal, that's also horrible, and God doesn't want us to do that. That blood sacrifice was made by Jesus. So we trust in that by faith, that blood sacrifice, that Jesus made a blood sacrifice for us. That's how the blood sacrifice is made. By faith. And he died and rose in the third day. It's the only way to get saved today. If you want to go to the rapture, it's the only way of salvation today. And people give you different ways of this. And I'm, friends, I've got stacks and stacks of books. I've got tons of books. Some I paid a lot of money for over the years. Like this one here, Systematic Theology. This book is garbage. If this person who wrote this book did not rightly divide their Bible. They do not believe they do not believe in a rapture, or at least a pre-tribulation one. This book is fat and thick. It's a huge book. And within 20 minutes of me reading this book, I realized what this author was all about. I'm not knocking on the author, but they do not got it right. They got things that are off. You know, it's all kinds of different things. I have just a bunch of Bibles here and a bunch of different uh, study things here. And if you know your Bible, you can pick out which, what parts are wrong when it comes to people talking about it. Like these kind of books, you can pick out when they're doing saying something wrong. And there's certain preachers that I stay away from because I know what their beliefs are and I stay away from them. I'm not going to get into who they are, but I stay away from them. This person's quoting this book here. They're quoting on certain preachers that I don't agree with and the famous ones. So we have to be careful. And I, I, I'm studying scripture and studying all these different ways. I'm even trying to get into the mind of writers, uh, you know, uh, authors of these books and see what are they thinking and why. 
and you're not rightly dividing, you can get in a whole lot of mess if you do not rightly divide your Bible. So you, I always teach, you know, when I teach Bible studies, I always think, I've always got the rightly dividing right there because if you don't rightly divide, you'll be in error. And it could throw you into hell because you could be in the wrong dispensation. At least they, you'll think you are. Like Jehovah's Witnesses, they're thinking the wrong dispensation. You know, in Mormons, they don't even follow the Bible. they got their own Book of Mormon. It, it's ridiculous. I mean, don't go near that stuff either. But... It's all about Jesus, no matter what. It's all about Jesus. He's the one. It's all Him. He did the work. He's the one. He's God. And He took care of all of it for you. Just believe, trust, faith in what He did. That blood atonement, making that sacrifice for your sins. He died and rose again the third day. There's so much stuff I, I see on YouTube and I see other preachers. I've read a lot of literature about different local churches and they have it wrong. I've not seen one that had it right. It's really terrible. I'd love, for, I'd love to walk up to someone. Hey, what's the gospel? They say, 1 Corinthians 51 through our trust and blood. I'd be freaking out. This is amazing. I need them. Yeah, we're going to fellowship then, buddy. Because that's what we're to it. You know, but it's all about what he did. Someone can say, well, I would, you know, I get, I have people coming here and people that are willing to listen because I don't push it on people. I just kind of like throw a little bait out. Oh, I'm a preacher. And, you know, and some all tell me. And sometimes people have questions because I love that. If we get into scripture and I, you know, I'll go through. I'll go through and people, if they let me, I'll take as much time as I can and I'll show them the way of salvation, explain it, you know, and show them through scripture. Like, oh, wow, that's great. And I'm going, did you get saved? And they go, I didn't know. I go, how did you get saved? They go, oh, well, I just, I just did this prayer and I felt good in my heart and that's how I got saved. I'm like, well, the Bible doesn't say you get saved that way. And some people listen and some people goes right in one ear and out the other. I don't know why. Just people aren't ready to listen and maybe they never will be, which is sad. But if you have friends and family... They've never heard the gospel, tell them. And if you're getting saved today, then amen. Then you're on your way to heaven. If the rapture happens, you're going at the rapture. Because you have to make a blood sacrifice or you're not saved. And then making that blood sacrifice is the faith in the blood Jesus spilled. That's how that blood sacrifice is made today. Because we have faith in the blood Jesus already spilled. It's all about faith and no works by you. You don't have to get water baptized to go to heaven. You don't have to ask Jesus into your heart to go to heaven. You don't have to call upon the name of the Lord. You're going to have, you know, that's Romans 10, 13. You read the whole chapter and it's not what you think it is. That's more for Jews in tribulation. There's all these different ways people do this. I go to church all the time. I give to, I give and I, I'm, I'm a nice person. Great. It will not get you to heaven except through that blood. I hope this helps you and I will talk to you later.